All right, at this time, uh, we're going to go to our center drum to take our colors out here. In honor of all of our veterans here, our United States flag, also our Comanche Nation flag, and also our state of Oklahoma flag, and also our armed forces flag. And let's not remember the prisoners of war and the mission in action. Take them out there, singers in the middle. Take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very proud of our Comanche Indian Veterans Association. We're very honored that they come to this celebration every year. Our celebrations throughout Indian country, representing our Comanche people, their service to this great nation of ours, and the freedoms that we share. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for the Comanche Indian Veterans Association. standing in front of us here, these young people wearing this red t-shirt. They represent the murdered and missing indigenous women. Many of them lost uh, loved ones, lost their mamas when they were young, perhaps. But they're here. And we want you to take your place as we excuse our, our flag bearers. Yeah, thank you, NMIW. Fall in. 
these groups as they excuse themselves wearing a red t-shirt. They represent the MMIW, Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women. We are proud of them for they endured a lot of pain. We had a walk on Tuesday all around the campus here. It was well attended, close to 300 people, including our Shoshone, came to be with us, came to walk. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some visitors with us here. We have Bobby Camardley of the Apache Tribe, Chairman. We also have the Apache Vice Chairman, Christopher Killspurs. We also have the CNA Representative, Mrs. Lorinda Morgan. Also, we have with us our Tribal Chairman of the Great Comanche Nation, ladies and gentlemen, Willie Nelson. Also, along with him, our Vice Chairman, Tribal Chairwoman, Lenora Parker. Also, our business committee woman, Diana Gail Sobo. Let's give them a round of applause. And at this time, we're going to our tribal chairman, Willie Nelson. Take it away. Manassi family, you're the boss today. You're in that center. You're with this drum. I want to ask your permission. Can these dancers sit down? Dancers, please sit down. Hold on. To the Washington Post. The Washington Post said, why is Bernie Sanders coming to Comanche country? So I answered the Washington Post. They haven't been very nice to Mr. Sanders, so I gave them a very good letter. I said it's an honor that an actual candidate for president would visit the Comanche Nation. We, the Comanche people, have not seen any representation from any potential candidate for the highest office of our great country since the late Comanche chief, Juana Parker, and presidential hopeful, hopeful Teddy Roosevelt hunted wolves in Oklahoma. That's what I told them. Then I went on. We find this time in America for all citizens to be as one. Do we not? What to be as one American citizens, Comanche Nation, do we not that want that? To be as one, to be as one. We're hopeful other possible candidates of both sides of the presidential race would visit Southwest Oklahoma and the nation, within a nation, the great Comanche Nation. Today, September 22nd, 2019. Our Comanche Nation is a sovereign nation backed by multiple treaties. It is the faith of the Comanche Nation that the United States knows that we have a trust duty to the Comanche Nation as attested by those past treaties. Our nation can never be encumbered by any state they live in, not past, not now, and not the future. Do you believe that? <laughs> Nor can we deny our original lands which were never disseminated. Never, never. We had lands from Calgary all the way to Mexico City. Number no, 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 well-traveled. Senator Sanders, you are standing on original allotted land assigned by federal patent by the late President McKinley. The Comanche Nation welcomes you to our 2019 Comanche Fair. We welcome any candidate running for president. We do. May the Comanche Nation and American citizens welcome the longest serving independent congressman the senator from Vermont, who's running for the president of the United States. Here he is, everybody. Senator Bernie Sanders. Chairman Nelson. Bernie, 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 Bernie. 
Thank you. Brandon Nelson and brothers and sisters of the Comanche Nation. Thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this beautiful, beautiful celebration. I have been, needless to say, to many events in my political career, but I do not believe that I've been to anything as beautiful and as moving as this event. So thank you so much for allowing me to be here. I want to say something that I hope all of you understand. And that is that the culture of the Native American people, the American Indian, is a culture which is so respected by young people and all people all across our nation. You have enriched the American people. You have educated the American people, especially your respect for the environment. What you understand and what you have taught us and it is a lesson that must be learned now or the entire planet will be endangered. You have taught us that as human beings, we are part of nature and we cannot destroy nature and survive. Thank you for teaching us that important lesson. I know and you know that for too many years the needs of the American Indian have been ignored, treaties have been broken, and lie after lie has been told to you. The time is long overdue, perhaps hundreds of years overdue for the Native American people to be treated with the respect and dignity they are entitled to. The American Indian people have a right not only for input in terms of the decisions being made, you have a right to be part of the decision making. You know the problems better than any bureaucrat. So not only will you get a seat at the table, you will be part of the decision making. It is not acceptable to me nor to you that the poverty rate in the Native American community is atrociously high. It is not acceptable that your children are not getting the quality education they deserve. It is not acceptable that the health care that you're getting is inadequate. So what we will be doing, working with you, you're going to be part of the process, is to change the value system of the United States. And our value system is, instead of giving tax breaks to billionaires, we are going to invest in the working people of our country, including the Native American people. And what that means is that we will raise the minimum wage in this country to $15 an hour. It means that we will make public colleges and universities tuition free for everybody. And it means that we're going to cancel all student debt. I believe, as I think you believe, that health care is a human right, not a privilege. And that is why we are going to expand Medicare 
to cover every man, woman, and child in this country. People will be able to go to the doctors without taking out their wallet, without taking out their credit card. No deductibles, no co-payments, no premiums. Health care is a human right. And with you, we will work with your leadership, with your knowledge, with your belief in sustainability. We will work with you to have the United States lead the world in combating the global crisis of climate change. We need your culture to educate the American people that we cannot just destroy the environment and think we're going to save the planet. You have taught us the need to respect the environment, to love the environment, to know that we are part of the environment. And that is a lesson that all of us in the United States and around the world are going to have to learn if we are going to survive as a planet. So I thank you very much for what you have taught us. Just a little while ago, I met with some of the women who were active in the missing and murdered indigenous women's movement. And my pledge to you is that we will have an attorney general and a department of justice that will not ignore your pain. We will work with you, and we will do everything possible to bring federal, state, and local law enforcement together, not only to solve the murders that you have experienced, but to do everything that we can to prevent future murders. And we are also going to reform the criminal justice system in this country. Too many people are in jail. And I believe that we should spend money on educating our young people, getting good jobs for our young people, rather than building more jails and more incarceration. So there is a lot of work that we have got to do. And the pain and the lies and the broken treaties that have fallen upon the American Indian people, that has got to end. It should have ended hundreds of years ago. It should never have happened. But our job together is to end those sins, those terrible things, to bring our people together and to treat the Native American people with the respect and dignity that God knows they are entitled to. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. Bernie! Bernie! Dr. Pee Wee Wardy, would you come forward? Matt Kamalti, would you come forward? Bob Kamartley, would you come forward? Our Cheyenne Arapaho representation, would you come forward? What you're seeing here is the west side of Oklahoma. What you are seeing here is sovereign nation. Bernie, Dr. Pee Wee Wardy is going to give you our Comanche Nation blanket. We want you to always keep it, use it for warmth. Look at it and think of Western Oklahoma. <laughs> Is Gil still here, Wallace? Mr. Sanders, God bless you. Don't forget us. 
Last one of us here was Theodore Roosevelt. Oh, yeah, my Uncle Fred Harris. We got it. Is that it, uh, Willie? Hey, let's hear it again for Bernie Sanders, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Bernie, 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 come on. Thank you, Matt Camulti of the Kiowa Nation here, tribal chairman. Also, Bobby Camardley, tribal chairman, Apache tribe. All right. Let's clear the arena there. Clear the arena. Also, Dr. Cornell P. Wardy. Thank you there.